Knowing how to properly value a stock is probably the most important skill for a value investor to learn. Knowing how much a company is worth will help you buy pieces of world-class companies at great prices. Over time, this can make you extremely wealthy. Over the past 60 years, one of the simplest and most popular methods of calculating how much a company is worth has been the Ben Graham formula. In this video, I'll show you step-by-step -step exactly how to make that calculation, and I'll also talk you through how you can put that calculation into a spreadsheet that will do it all for you. Please keep in mind as we talk through this formula that the Graham formula is an intrinsic value model used to quickly determine if a stock is currently selling for fair value or not. It's important to remember that as with most valuation models, this formula is not designed to give you an exact or true value of a stock. Instead, it only gives you an estimation of the value. That's why based on your request, I've decided to create a new video series in which I'll discuss various valuation models. This is the first in that video series. Here you see the Ben Graham formula as revised by him in 1974. In this formula, V represents the intrinsic value of a company or the number we're ultimately looking for. EPS is the earnings per share of the company that we are researching. 8.5 represents the price to earnings base for a company that has no growth. G is the estimated growth rate over the next five years. 2G is twice that growth rate. 4.4 is the average yield of the AAA corporate bonds in Graham's time, but it still applies today. Why is the current yield of the AAA corporate bonds? Please note that this yield, it changes constantly, so it'll be one that we'll have to look up. Now let's actually use the Ben Graham model to determine the intrinsic value of Apple. Apple is a well-known computer, phone, and household electronics company. In order to determine its intrinsic value, we first need to get the necessary information about Apple. In order to find the earnings per share for Apple, you can either look at your broker's website, for example, here on E-Trade, you see that it has the earnings per share at 6.15, or you can go to Yahoo Finance, which is what I'd suggest, and in the search bar, type in the ticker symbol of the company you're working with. In this case, it's Apple. Here you see the earnings per share for the trailing 12 months is 6.14. So you see that we have a slight discrepancy between this and E-Trade, and we're not really going to worry about it because it's 0.01 different. You know how I like to make things as simple and fast as possible. And if you're using Google Sheets to create your formula, an easy way to have this done for you automatically is to use the Google Finance function, and the earnings per share will automatically fill in for you when you change the stock ticker symbol in the yellow box that we've labeled above for input data area. For example, here you see that I've changed it to Amazon, and it's now switched automatically to the Amazon earnings per share. So you can either input the earnings per share manually or use the formula to do it for you automatically. With the Graham formula, the price to earnings with no growth stays the same. So you can just manually put it in one time at 8.5 and leave it there for future calculations. For the growth weight, we can go back to Yahoo Finance and go to the Analysis tab. Click on it. If you scroll all the way down to the next to last line in the purple box here, you see what analysts are estimating Apple's growth to be over the next five years. And we see that that estimate is 9.91%. Remember that this is an estimate. So if you believe that's too high, you can always adjust it lower. Or if you believe it's too low, you can always adjust it higher. It's really up to you. But we'll go with the analyst estimates, which is 9.91. In the purple box, this 2G is simply grams multiplier for the growth rate. So it'll just be a constant two. The average yield for the AAA corporate bond will be a constant number that will not change. It will be 4.4. And the last number we need to find is the current yield for the AAA corporate bonds. Earlier I mentioned that we have to look this up in order to find the most accurate and recent rate, which is important to our formula. To find it, we simply go to Google and search for the current yield of AAA corporate bonds. I like to use this website here at the point of the purple arrow. Click that link and you see that it's currently at 4.13. So go back to our spreadsheet and manually input 4.13 as you see in the purple box. Now we have all the information we need to calculate the intrinsic value of Apple. But before I get to that, if you're going to use Google Documents, I encourage you to make it easy on yourself by doing what I've done here at the top left corner in the purple box. Notice that I've made a section here so that I know every time I want to run Graham's formula to get the intrinsic value of a new company, these are the four pieces of information I'm going to need. I'll need the ticker symbol, the growth rate, and Y, which is the current yield of AAA corporate bonds. And then we'll get to the margin of safety in just a minute. So in our valuation model, I've simply set the cells that change to be equal to the cell in the yellow area that I know I need to fill out for each new stock valuation. For the cells that are automated, you can see that they have the automatic Google Finance formulas filled in, so we don't have to do anything with those cells. Once we change the ticker symbol, those cells will change automatically. Now we're ready to create a formula to calculate the intrinsic value of Apple or whatever stock we're evaluating. You see the formula above here, but let me show you exactly how to type it into the formula bar. So we start with the equal sign, open parentheses, and then click the earnings per share cell, and then times, 
open parentheses, the price to earnings with no growth plus open parentheses, the growth rate times a factor of two and then close parentheses twice times the average yield of the AAA corporate bond, close parentheses, divided by the current yield of the AAA corporate bonds. When you hit enter, you see that we now have our current intrinsic value of Apple. In order to make it easier for us to make a decision about whether we want to buy the stock or trade options in it, let's add a little more automation to our spreadsheet here. This will add the current price, the difference between the current price and our intrinsic value, how much a margin of safety do we want, and that will produce an acceptable buy price once we get the formula, which I'll show you in just a minute. We also want to have an automated sell that tells us whether we should buy or sell the company. Now let me show you how to get this information. In order to get our current price, we can again use the Google Finance formula up in the top bar here and simply want to reference the cell up top in our yellow area with the ticker symbol and then open quotes and type price, close quotes, and close the parentheses. Then we'd like to see the difference between what our intrinsic value is and the stock's current price. You see that this formula says the estimated intrinsic value is $185.55. And now that our formula has automatically pulled from our Google Finance formula, you see that the current price is $145.38. So our formula is telling us that the stock is currently trading at 78.35% of the intrinsic value. Now, if you wanted to add an additional margin of safety, notice that here in the yellow area, we can do that. If we make it 10%, it will adjust our acceptable buy price. And here's the formula for the margin of safety. Notice that when we adjusted the margin of safety, it went from acceptable buy price with no margin of safety at 185.55 to 167 if we switch that margin of safety to 10%. Here's the formula for this acceptable buy price. Now we want Google Sheets to automatically calculate this based on all our information, including our margin of safety. We want it to tell us if this is a stock that we should consider buying or maybe one that we should consider selling if we own it already. Here you see the formula that will produce a buy or sell signal for you. If you're happy with this formula, then that's all you need. By the way, if you find this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. One of the drawbacks with Ben Graham's valuation formula is that growth is such a big factor in the overall valuation. You can change that 8.5 to whatever you believe is the correct price factor for a no growth company. Depending on how conservative you are, I think you'd be in good shape with anything between 7 and 8.5. 7, of course, will be the most conservative, and 8.5 will be the most aggressive. The 2 times G, or estimated growth for the next 5 years, is considered by some to be very aggressive. So if you want to be less aggressive, you can reduce the multiplier from 2 down to 1. If you did all that, here's what your new formula would look like. So in our new revised valuation model, at the two arrows, you see that we've changed the PE base for a no growth company from 8.5 to 7. And we've changed the multiplier from 2 down to 1. Now we've just copied all the formulas from our original calculation over to this new Graham's revised valuation model. And I encourage you, when you first input all this, even if the formulas appear to work, go ahead and run it by hand just to make sure that you've done your math correctly. With these new, more conservative numbers, notice what's happened. Our intrinsic value went way down from 185 per share down to 110 per share. Graham's formula switched from a buy signal to a sell signal. With a 10% margin of safety, our acceptable buy price went from 167 down to $99.72. That is a huge difference. So you just need to decide how conservative you want to be while still using Graham's formula. If we go with Graham's initial formula, since the intrinsic value is higher than the current stock price, then with this formula, Apple is undervalued and it'd be a good time to buy stock, do a poor man's covered call, or maybe even sell some cash to put options in it. Remember that you don't want to decide based solely on this one model. Ben Graham's valuation model, it does give you an idea of what he would think of Apple's current stock price. On the other hand, if you want the more conservative model, you can see the intrinsic value is $110.80. Since Apple's currently trading for $145.38, it'd be considered overvalued, and you most likely avoid buying the stock at this time. Or if you sold options, you consider selling some put options below where it's currently trading at. Graham's formula is helpful in getting a quick approximation of the value of a stock so you can make a quick decision about whether it's a good time to possibly buy a company or not. Remember, this model is not perfect. In fact, there are many models available to investors to calculate the company's worth and help them decide if it's a good time to buy a piece of a company or trade options in it. As a result, in the coming months, I'll create a video series in which I'll discuss a different valuation model in each video. This video is the first in a series of videos that I'll be releasing in the coming months to help you determine if a stock is trading at a price that these various models tell you is an attractive price and a good time to buy it at or not. So if you'd like to see those videos, 
please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you're alerted as soon as a new video comes out. In each video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the formula in a spreadsheet like we did in this video. And if you just want to understand it, but you don't want to do the actual work, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below, because I'll be making these spreadsheets available in the near future to my upper tier patrons. If you're curious about how much cash you could potentially generate by selling options and collecting dividends, Check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.